We're back with another Prusa Link Prusa Connect video, only this time we're talking about setting up multiple cameras. What's up everyone, Chris here. A couple of weeks ago we did a video on multiple instances of Prusa Link on one host. In that video we were using a Raspberry Pi, but you do have multiple options of the host that you'd like to use to host Prusa Link. If you don't know what Prusa Link is, it's the software that Prusa uses to communicate with their printer via the web. So you can get on the web UI, control your printer, you can send files to it, and then Prusa Link has the capability to talk up to Prusa Connect via the cloud connector, and you can view all of your printers from the Prusa Connect site. Well, today we're going to talk about adding cameras to that setup. Automatically, if you have multiple instances or a single instance, you can just add USB cameras to it, and they will all show up within your Prusa Link interface. Now to do this with multiple instances where you break the cameras up, it's not hard to do, but it takes a few additional steps, and that's what we're getting ready to walk through. So I've converted my 2.5 printers over to using Prusa Connect. I was using OctoPrint. There's nothing wrong with OctoPrint, but I would like to see all of my printers in the same interface via the Prusa Connect site because I have several different models, including XLs, Mark IVs, Mark IIIs, and now my 2.5s, I can see them all from one view, and that's what I want to get done. And I'll show you how to get everything set up so you can use a different camera on each instance. So let's jump over to the computer. So in our last video, when we did the multiple instance install of Prusa Link on a Raspberry Pi, I showed you how to get SSH access set up to that configuration so that you can make changes if you need to. Hopefully you did that when you created your image, but I'm just going to show you this as an example in the Raspberry Pi tool. Before you write the image, you're going to want to edit the settings. In the newer version of this tool, just make sure you have a username and password. You can set those to whatever you'd like. But then in the services tab, make sure you have enable SSH and use password authentication. That will give us the ability to log in SSH and make the changes that we're going to need to do today to utilize those cameras. And just to get you up to speed on what we're working with, this is my Mark 2.5 LAC enclosure. I have one in top, one in bottom. I've done videos on this before, but they both have a Logitech C270 camera that I can use to monitor the prints. And these are the cameras and the setup that we're going to move over to Prusa Link and Prusa Connect so that I can use both these cameras as I would in OctoPrint today. Again, nothing wrong with OctoPrint, but I'd like to be able to see all my printers in one view there in Prusa Connect. And this is how my Raspberry Pi is set up on the back of the enclosure. The two plugs behind these ones in the front, those go into the printers. Doesn't matter where you plug them in. And then those front two that we can see here, those are the Logitech C270s. Again, it doesn't matter where you plug them in. We're going to figure all of that out as we set up Prusa Link to use those cameras. I just wanted to show you this is how it's all set up on my enclosure. So just plug everything in and we'll get it sorted out. We're going to use the PuNny tool to be able to access our Raspberry Pi SSH to get this stuff set up. You will have to know your IP or at least your host name. I show you a little bit more about that in the multi-instance video. Again, it will be in the description. But we'll open it up and we'll use the credentials that we created when we built the image. We'll also open up a browser window to our IP of a Raspberry Pi. If you go directly to the IP, you're going to see your printer instances, no matter how many you have. We just have two installed here. But remember from the last video, it labels them printer 1, printer 2, and so on. Now, in our configuration, printer 1 is the bottom machine, printer 2 is the top machine. So just keep that in mind. You can also navigate to these directly if you put a slash 1 or slash 2, like so, in the URL bar, so you don't have to come to this main interface all the time. So we'll just head to printer one for now. You'll log in with the credentials that you created when you set up Prusa Link. Now, since we have both of our cameras already plugged in, they're by default going to be added to instance one. Instance two or any of the other ones will not get a camera, but you will have multiple cameras on this instance. We'll just head to the cameras tab. You can see down below, we have a thumbnail with each one of the cameras. So it is kind of a nice feature that you can add multiple cameras to each instance if you wish. You just plug them in, it will add them to instance one, and you should be good. This would be really handy if you like wanted to use an endoscope camera or something like that to view the nozzle. 
But nevertheless, all the cameras are now defined to instance one. There is nothing on instance two. We can confirm that. I'm just gonna duplicate this tab and we'll switch this from one to two. You can see on our top printer, there are no cameras. So we'll jump back to one. And this is kind of a side tip, but I like to go ahead and rename the cameras so that I can tell what they are in the configuration file. So this view we're looking at right here, you can actually see this little orange port in the image. That's how I know that this is the top printer or printer two, because there's a feed tube going down to the one below. So that's how I tell what this image is. So I come over here to the cog and I'm just gonna name it something that I know. So this is the top camera, I'll just call it top. And by default, since I only have two, I know this one here is the bottom one. So same thing, cog, bottom. So now we're good. We will come back to this after we're done because this switch right here actually enables them on Prusa Connect. We'll see more of that in a minute. So back to PuTTY and SSH. Now again, this isn't a hard thing to do. You just have to know the steps that you need to take. And there's a few files that we need to edit. First, we have to stop Prusa Link from automatically assigning those cameras to that first instance every time it comes up and that's in the Etsy Prusa link directory. We can take a look, I'm just gonna step you through this, ls forward slash etc. You can see there's a Prusa link directory. So we'll do that command again. We'll add Prusa link. And we want the Prusa link one configuration file because that's by default where all the cameras go to. So we wanna change that up. I'm just gonna do sudo nano to open the editor etc prusa link prusa link 1.ini and we only have one edit that we need to make in here and that's down here under cameras it now says auto detect true we're going to make it say false it is case sensitive make sure if you're doing true or false the first letter is capital so this will stop it from automatically assigning those cameras to number one so we'll hit control x Y for yes, enter to save. Once you make that change to that ETC file, I do recommend you just go ahead and reboot the Pi. We'll do sudo reboot. You can put in now. I like to sometimes, you don't have to. But that will make sure the change is made. If you don't do this and the change isn't updated, it could overwrite some of the files we're getting ready to edit now. So we'll wait for it to come back up. Once it's back up, we'll log back in. And now we're gonna edit the instance files. If you just do an LS here in home, you can tell it's home because there's a tilde right next to it. That should be your default location. And we have directories for Prusa Link 1 and Prusa Link 2. So we'll start with Prusa Link 1. We'll do CD Prusa Link 1. You can do an LS in here. There's where you save your Prusa Link G codes for this printer, but we're interested in this Prusa Printer Settings I and I config file. By the way, if you get stuck at any time, Prusa does have all this information out on their GitHub page. I'll leave a link to that. You can even copy and paste some of these commands if you wish, but the information is out here. I'm just walking you through it step by step. Back to PuTTY, we're going to edit our INI file. We'll do sudo nano prusa underscore printers underscore settings dot INI. And by default, again, it puts all of those cameras on the first instance. So you can see both the cameras are configured here. We just need to move the other one, the one we don't want on this instance, over to the other instance. So we'll remove it from this file. So the easiest way to do that is to just pull up something like Notepad++ and copy over the things that you want to add to the other instance. We'll just start over here. Remember I said the top printer on my configuration that's instance two the bottom one is instance one and you saw in that configuration we named these so it would be easier to figure out which one was which we did that inside the web UI so since we're editing Prusa link one that's the bottom printer so we'll want to move the top one so we'll just copy this batch right here you can see it has this serial number to designate it that's the camera you can highlight in PuTTY, that will copy it, and we'll just paste it in Notepad, 
And I'm also going to grab camera order down here because we'll want to move that, but we'll only want one camera. So I'll highlight that and save it as well. Now that I have those saved, I can make the edits to this file. I'm just going to remove the camera I don't want. So Prusa Link 1 is the bottom camera. I'm just going to delete the top entry. And then in camera order, I only want the bottom camera. And that's this FY camera down here, number two. So I'll remove one. And then I'll change this two in camera order to one. Now we only have one camera on this one instance of Prusa Link. So you can control X, Y, and enter to save. Now, if you get an error after you hit enter that this file has been updated, that edit that you made to turn that auto detect off in that Etsy file probably didn't get saved or you didn't reboot. Make sure you do that because if you do get this error that it's been updated, it's gonna overwrite everything that we just changed. So just make sure that you don't get any errors when you're doing this. If not, go back and redo that change. But we'll hit enter and we're good. No red messages. So this printer, this instance is good. We'll do cd space dot dot to go back a directory. Again, we'll take a look in there and we're just gonna cd into Prusa Link 2 and we'll make the updates for that camera. Same process, you can look inside here with an ls we're going to do sudo nano Prusa printer settings.ini for this second instance. You can see it has a camera order spot here to put them, but it has no camera. I'm just going to remove this and then what we saved in Notepad. I'm going to copy that back and paste it with a right mouse click because this is the second instance. This is our top printer, so this is our top camera config. And because I saved this camera order, I'm just going to take out the second entry. This one, the camera here for 3YQL, that's the correct camera. We named it correctly. We know that. And now it's the correct one in camera order. So we're good. Now we have both cameras assigned to the correct instance. We can control X, Y, enter to save. Make sure there's no errors. And you should be all set. We will need one more reboot to make everything permanent sudo reboot now. When the reboot is complete, we can go back to Chrome or whatever browser you have, navigate to your IPs. These are the camera tabs, but we've got instance one. Remember, that's our bottom camera. Our bottom camera is listed and we see our image. Then we'll go over to instance two. That's our top printer. Remember I told you the filament port right there. This is the correct camera. They're broke out. Now we can use them on an instance by instance basis. And remember, you can install multiple cameras if you wish, but this is how you divide them up no matter how many instances you're running. One last thing, make sure your slider here is ticked on both sides. That will enable the camera thumbnail or the preview over on Prusa Connect. So we'll go back to the other instance, make sure that's ticked. And if you follow the directions from the previous multi-instance video, I showed you how to get those set up in Prusa Connect. Ours are linked. After a couple of minutes, you can go to Prusa Connect and navigate to the Printers tab, and you should have both of your machines. They were already set up before, but now you should be able to see the thumbnails. So we've got our bottom 2.5 and our top 2.5. You can head in and go to the Cameras tab and just make sure it's showing the correct image, which it should be. Here's our bottom. Here's our top. We're all set, ready to use Prusa Link and our new camera images from Prusa Connect. It's all connected together. And that's the only reason why I pushed for Prusa Connect is because all of my machines are now in this one tab and I can use them however I want. Remember, you do have Prusa Slicer connectivity as well. You can push it directly to Prusa Link or Prusa Connect. It gives you a nice end-to-end -end process that you can use for your 3D printing experience. So there it is. Now you can use multiple cameras in Prusa Link and divide them up as you see fit if you have multiple instances on the same host. And you don't have to just stop it too. You can do even more. It should handle quite a few cameras just fine, depending on the host that you're using. And this was kind of a continuation from the last video where we did the multi-instance install. All of that information will be in the description below. 
But I found the need to get this done for my enclosure setup so I could have both my camera feeds where I needed them. So I thought it'd be worth the time to go ahead and share this with you. So hopefully you found this helpful. That's it for today. And I'll see you really soon on the next one.